Apple's Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse is your best combination for your Mac. So today let's unbox both the Magic Keyboard and Magic Mouse. So I'm gonna start with the Magic Keyboard first. On the box, we can see this is a Magic Keyboard with Touch ID and the layout of the keyboard is printed here. Behind we have all the information and especially the price point here. It says it's 14,500. Here they have highlighted that this has a fingerprint sensor. So this one comes with the USB-C. All right, so let's go ahead and unbox this and check out the keyboard. It's pretty nice. I like the packing of how the keyboard is placed inside this box and you just saw how this entire unit slides from the cover box. Okay, so let's remove this. All right, okay. I'm really glad that they have included a USB-C instead of a lightning port and this is pretty useful. And this kind of braided cable, you know, provides a good grip and you know, it also feels premium. The next thing what we see is the booklet. Okay, we have two booklets, uh, three in fact, we have three of them. This one is the user guide and we have regulatory compliance information and the Apple one year warranty limited summary. Let's explore the keyboard itself and let me remove this cover. Nice, I like this compact form factor. And the first thing what we notice is this fingerprint over here. And also you can see how compact this keyboard is. This material is aluminum and over here we can see the USB-C port. Behind we can see this Apple logo. And here it says designed by Apple in California, assembled in China and the model number and other information. And we can see this four rubber feet on all the corners. Another thing what we notice here is this tapered design. Over here it's thin and here it's thick. So when we place it on the surface, it's quite comfortable to you know type on this because this end is thin and it's easy to rest your palm and comfortably type on this keyboard. This keyboard is really light. It's way too light and I feel it's brittle. For those who want you know compact portable keyboard, this is the one. All right, so here's my M1 Pro MacBook and I'm gonna place this keyboard and it fits perfectly within this keyboard area of this MacBook. So basically the dimension of this external keyboard is similar to this dimension of this keyboard layout on the MacBook. You can also see your buttons are exactly similar. All right, so let's connect this keyboard to this MacBook. Okay, and I'm under the Bluetooth section of the settings. Okay, at the end here I can see it says magic keyboard. I'm gonna click connect. Okay, great. It says the keyboard is connected. And here I can see under my devices, magic keyboard is connected, all right? Let's check if the keyboard is working. Great to see that it's working. And you know, the keys are minimum travel and it doesn't stick at all. Therefore, it's a quiet typing experience. Now let's test the fingerprint sensor. Okay, so I have to configure this fingerprint. It appears it's not working, it's not recognizing. One of the most common issue with this Magic Keyboard is this fingerprint doesn't work sometimes when you configure it. So initially it happened to me, I was trying to, you know, you know, configure a fingerprint on this Magic Keyboard, it didn't work. So that's because of two reasons. One is you need to have a Apple Silicon MacBook from M1 onwards. And secondly, the Mac OS should be version 15.1. So these are the two requirements for enabling fingerprint on this magic keyboard. All right, so here I am and uh, there is already one fingerprint configured. I'm gonna add a fingerprint. Okay, so here I have a message that says place your finger. I'm gonna do it on this magic keyboard. All right. Okay, now it says double press touch ID on my MacBook. So I'm gonna double press. Okay, great. So again, it's asking me to place my finger. Great, it's working. Perfect. The fingerprint worked on this magic keyboard. That's really awesome. I'm gonna click on done. Talking about the battery on this keyboard, it should last at least a couple of weeks. In order to charge it, you just have to connect it to the power source. I hope there was some kind of light indicator that it's charging. However, you can check under the keyboard settings. Here we can see the battery percentage. It says 100% for the keyboard. So this is how we can check how much battery is left on this device. All right, so it's now time to unbox the Magic Mouse. 
we have this image of the magic mouse printed here all right so let's quickly unbox it all right so here we are let's see what we have inside this box okay we have this booklet which contains the user guide and warranty information i'm gonna keep this aside and we do have this cable and this is again a braided cable and nice it, it this color matches the magic mouse color the one i have here is the usb-c to lightning port all right so let's look at the mouse itself you can see the apple logo here and behind there's two feet here and this is the sensor and we have other information printed here okay and we do have the switch to turn on the mouse i used to wonder why the charging port on the magic mouse is behind because you know if you want to charge you can't use the mouse at all so here this is the lightning port to connect it it's now connected to the power source and while this mouse is getting charged you cannot use this mouse it would have been nice if the port was somewhere over here and you can place the mouse and you can still use it while it's getting charged here you can see there's a shiny glossy finish and it's very smooth if you don't see this apple logo you may get confused whether the mouse is both side looks same and so the apple logo is indicator that how to place the mouse so basically this is how it should be there is no separate button cut out like how we see in other mouse the whole thing is plain and it's single button so let's hear the click sound so one thing i would like to highlight about this magic mouse is you know the good thing is although this design looks very unique because of sleek and thin appearance when it comes to ergonomics it's not so comfortable you know when i place my palm on this mouse i still feel you know there is a gap here you now for instance if you check this hp mouse you can see the thickness over here and although it may not look so good it's comfortable to hold but that's not the case when it comes to apple mouse it would have been nice that apple would consider the ergonomics point of view when handling the mouse all right so let's connect this magic mouse to this macbook let me go to settings i'm gonna turn on the switch okay here i can see at the bottom it says magic mouse great we have a message that magic mouse is connected so yeah it's responding that's really good so let's explore more the sensors on this mouse works very well if you know if you just place two finger on the mouse and just slide it like this you can see how the screen moves similarly on this side if you're browsing the web page you can just you know use this single finger on the middle of the mouse to scroll down and scroll up again if you are want to switch to a different desktop you can just slide it across okay now we need to ensure that the secondary click is on so we have option either to select the right side or the left side so i'm going to select the right side okay now if i click on the right side you can see the menu appears we can see we have the right click option available and the next thing what we have to enable is the smart zoom i'm going to turn it on all right so now look at the place where you want to zoom in for example this text here and we are going to double tap so it gives a quick smart zoom of that particular area. We can see how the you know, text is enlarged with the help of zoom and we can read the text clearly. And similarly, if you want to zoom out, just double tap it and it's going to zoom out so quickly. Reason for using a magic keyboard and magic mouse on a MacBook is for people who use an external monitor as a primary display. So you can see here my MacBook is closed and it's in a clamshell mode and I can see the MacBook screen on this desktop this is a dell monitor by the way and for the input output i can use this keyboard and mouse you can see i'm able to you know use a mouse and scroll this browser so let's test the fingerprint again since now we have configured the fingerprint we can test if it's working when this macbook is closed All right so let me install a random software to check if the fingerprint works so i'm going to select for example this particular app i'm going to install it so i'm going to click on get All right, so here it's asking me touch ID to allow this app store. So I'm going to click touch ID. Great, it worked. So it's downloading. So the fingerprint works absolutely fine. So if you are someone who likes the smaller, more compact design, this is a great option, especially if you are invested in Apple ecosystem. Furthermore, if you're using the Apple Silicon Mac, Ensure that you get this magic keyboard which has this touch ID. It's really worth it. You know, it's a very productive experience using both magic mouse and magic keyboard. You can see it occupies less space and ease of use. What's your opinion about this? Let me know in the comment section below. As always, please hit the subscribe button and like my video. Thanks for watching. Peace.